Welcome to our Missionary Stories. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. Aren't these the most exciting lessons? We learn so much when we learn about faithful servants of God as John Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress and how it applies to our life today. How do we get from this city of destruction, this awful city that we're living in, this terrible world, to be able to get to the city that God has prepared for us, the celestial city, where there's no pain or no sorrow. So today we're going to learn just a little bit about what putting on the hold armor of God means. And I want you, everybody that's listening, to write this Bible verse down. Ephesians 6, 11. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the hold armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we know that the devil is our enemy. Satan is our enemy. And he is a terrible, terrible, cruel person. And he hates you with cruel hatred. And this is something we must all understand, that he is our enemy. He goes about as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. And he only has one place for you. And that is, he's going to be in the bottomless pit for a thousand year reign. While we're going to be reigning with Christ in perfect peace. He is going to be King of King and Lord of Lords for a whole year. We're going to be reigning with him. Everybody is going to be treated right while he is reigning as king. And then after the thousand year reign with Christ, those that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior is going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's why you need to know your enemy. That's why we're teaching you these things. So first of all, we saw how Pilgrim, he found someone that was supposed to help him, but he agreed to sin with him just like Pilgrim wanted him to do. As soon as someone wants you to sin, they are your enemy. And you can never have peace as a child of God to go off of the path. The road is narrow to those that are going to the celestial city. It's wide to those that reject this wonderful gift of eternal life. So he says, now, this is how you must remember that when someone is hurting you, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not people. You must understand it's not people. It is Satan, Satan and his demonic spirits. And then we told you that you put on the shield of faith. This is the most important one. Now, this is important for you to know this. And... Above all, taken the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of Satan. All means all, and that's all all means. So then I have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So put on the shield of faith. Now here's what faith is. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're going to be rewarded when we get to heaven. We're going to be rewarded by God. And we saw how the children of Israel had been slaves for 400 years. 430 years they came out. And you know what? I want all of you to listen. You 
are a slave to sin, if you are a child of God, you're a slave to sin. For those that have never received Christ, and this is in Ephesians 2, I want you to listen to what God's Word says about you today. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. You see, you're dead. Satan, you're a child of the devil. Wherein, in times past, this is us as believers, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh. See, we're to walk in the spirit, and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So here you see that we're your child of the devil. Then you come out of that darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. This is how you live the obedient life. And this is how you have real joy. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee once again for thy word that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank thee for the Spirit of God that convicts us. And we're thankful for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that is a comforter to us and also a discomforter to those that are disobedient. So we're asking today that the Spirit of God would open their eyes today, their understanding to know that we can walk worthy of thee unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of thee, strengthened with all might according to thy glorious power unto all patience, with long suffering, giving thanks unto thee. We want to extol thee, we want to praise thee today. We want to thank thee for this time that we're able to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and that thou hast promised to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings we don't know how to receive. Thank thee for victory for each of us that desires thy perfect will. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Thank thee for hearing and answering my prayer today. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So we saw how the children of Israel, they came out. This was their redemption by blood because all the people that did not have the blood on the doorpost, this was in the shape of a cross, they died. They died, the oldest son in every family died. They did this by faith. They were inside. They put that on there with hyssop, the blood from the animal that had been slain. That's how we know that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin as soon as we confess that sin. And then after you confess that sin, you cannot live the disobedient life and expect God to bless. So you must forsake the sin that you're in because it's causing you to be a slave to sin. So we saw how the children of Israel came out of Egypt and then their enemies were destroyed. Their enemies were destroyed. And this is how we're to do, put on the shield of faith and he is able to quench all the fiery darts of Satan. So then they saw their enemies defeated and then they rejoiced with great joy and sing the first song in the Bible. And that is Exodus 15. And we're going to sing that song in heaven. This is the greatest blessing. You see, people that are not saved, God's word says, their righteousness is as filthy rags, as filthy rags. And we have the righteousness of Christ. Now I want to just give you a few things about redemption. You see, we're redeemed by the blood. That means we've been bought with a price. And I want you to listen at these, and I want you to know yourself if you're a child of God. Redemption is entirely 
from God. Redemption is through a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Redemption is by the blood. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Redemption is from the guilt of sin. Redemption is from the power of sin. You see, in Ephesians 1, 4, God gave us salvation. Jesus Christ gave us his blood. In Ephesians 1, 7, the Holy Spirit sealed that salvation. And this is until the day of redemption, till we get a new body. Ephesians 1, 13. So, salvation till the day of Christ is our redemption. Salvation is secured by the blood and by the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's how you can never be lost after you become a child of God because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. We have his divine nature and he's going, we're going to be raptured. The Holy Spirit has to be within us to rapture us. That's the power that we're going to be raptured to meet the Lord in the air. Our soul and our spirit goes to be with the Lord, absent from the body and present with the Lord. You see all that we have in Christ. So what happened then? After they read the lesson about redemption of the Jews. Well, he can do that for us too. But you see what happened? They forgot that they had the promise that God would deliver them if they ask. And he said, how could God love us after we've been sitting here and been disobedient to him? When I have this promise and we had the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and there they were sitting so, so sad with self-pity. If you are suffering today and you're in this condition, he says in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, and that all things work together for good to them that love him. Do you love the Lord the way he loves us? We're commanded to do that. So what, after this, we know that they went through each door, unlocked the door, because of the promise that God had given to them. The one promise that they remembered was Psalm 138. I'll just read this because this is a verse that they used. You see, it is, I have to give him back his promises for me to receive the promise. So he says in 138, verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies. That's what he did with Israel. And thy right hand shall save me. The Lord is perfect. He will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. This is God's promise to us today. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So, after they came through the doors, the last door was rusty. And the giant heard the door open. And now they defeated him with the word of God. Now they ran out of this dungeon that they were in. They were running toward the celestial city. They knew that time was short. So they met people on the way. And many times they met people that had gone on before them. And those that have gone on before us, we're going to see them in heaven. He says, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So they met one man on the way. And they asked him if he was on his way to the celestial city. And he said, yes. They said, did you stop at the 
day of decision and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and believe that his blood cleanses you from all sin. Because that's what we do when we meet another person that we're not sure if they're truly born again. We can ask them a question. Do you know God loves you? And I love you. And I would like to tell you the most wonderful story in the world. That's how you talk to people. So this man said, no, I am not a sinner. And God's word plainly teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said, I have lived a good life. And he said, most better than most people. And I hope that I will get to the celestial city. And they said, will you walk with us? He says, no, you go on. I, will, I walk slowly. He said, I hope I get to heaven. So they, sh they gave him this word. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you see, he thought because of his good works that he had been good all of his life that he was going to go to heaven. And they were so concerned about him. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you see, he is blind to the Word of God. You see, Satan has your eyes blinded. So here is how you receive Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, I want to ask you right now, do you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? And what question do you have? Here's what God's Word tells you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. You see, it's not his will that any should perish, so all you have to do is to call upon him today. So he didn't listen to them, and they began praying for him. They wanted to know how they could reach him, but he would not listen. He would not listen. He said, you will see that I will get to heaven, the celestial city, just like everybody else. They will not turn me away because I have been good all my life. So they read the story. As they sat down, they read the story about Cain and Abel. Now this is a wonderful story about Cain and Abel because we know what God's Word says about Cain. Here Adam and Eve had two, two sons and Cain obeyed what God's Word had said to bring a, the blood sacrifice, a lamb. And when he brought the lamb, God sent fire down from heaven and consumed it, and he was pleased with his offering. Cain brought the works of his hands. Now, he was a farmer, and I have taught so many people that said, why didn't God accept Cain's offering? Because when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God gave them an animal. The blood had to be shed for their sin. That animal never sinned, he, he was innocent. Christ never sinned, he was innocent. He is a gift from God. That animal was a gift from God and it must be by blood. And now this is what God's Word teaches us about Cain and Abel. Cain thought he was going, he was bringing the offering that pleased him, not what pleased God. So here's what God teaches us about Cain. Now we know that in Hebrews, the Hall of Fame is in Hebrews chapter 11. And Abel, is in that hall of fame. Listen what he said about Abel. He said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by his gift, he being dead yet speaketh. He's in the Hall of Fame, Abel is. 
And then here's what happened. God's Word teaches us about pain. Now, if you believe you can get to heaven by your works, here's what God says about pain. He was the first one that disobeyed God by bringing his works instead of the blood. And Christ, see, that's why he had to shed his blood before we could be saved. And this is 1 John verse chapter 3, verse 11. For this is a message that you heard from the beginning, from Adam and Eve. This is the divine requirement for an acceptable sacrifice, is the blood all through the Bible, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, wherefore slew he him, and his brothers righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Why do we see so much hatred today? All from Satan. All hatred comes from Satan. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So, after they read about Cain and Abel, they said, he is just like Cain, and we can't reach him. So, they, in this story, they told about the man that did not receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went to the place of torment. They saw him carried out of this life. And if you're carried out of this life in death, they saw this, and you haven't received Christ after death, it's too late. Then they were looking for the celestial city. They kept waiting. Now, in this story, they have the last time they saw this man, they saw what happened to him. And they knew they could not rejoice because his name was written in heaven. But yet, they tried and he wouldn't listen. Is this you today? Have you rejected Christ? Because if you're believing in good works, here's what God's Word says. We are his workmanship after we're saved, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Then we're to start serving him. We are an ambassador for Christ. And they saw this huge river that they were supposed to cross over. Now, this is a picture of trials that we come come to us in this life. And they said, can, how can we cross this river? And they said, for some people, it is much worse than others, but you're to keep your eye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what they did with every trial. They learned through the things that had happened to them that they could be obedient to the Lord by looking at Christ and not looking at the things of the world. So today, I want to ask you in 1 John 5, God's Word says, and this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and that life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. This is what God teaches us in His Word, that there is no way for you to get to heaven except believe in what Christ has done and accept that. And today, you could be saved 100-fold in this city. Then in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son hath not life but the wrath of God abideth on you. Is the wrath of God abiding on you today? Are you obeying what God's Word says? I pray today that you will do what these people did that we have given to you. And here's what God says to you today, and I want you to listen to this. He that believeth on him, Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed 
in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Call upon the Lord today to save you, and you will know that you're a child of God because it's just like pilgrim. It was a heavy burden, and you can never have peace and joy until you know Christ as Savior. Then we're all looking forward to meet Him in the air. We're going to get a new body when we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second. That means we have reached the speed of light, which is a body of light. We're going to have a body of light just like the Lord Jesus Christ that never hurts. And we're going to be in heaven where there's no more sorrow and no more tears and no more pain. Those of you that are in pain today, or maybe you have a child that is rebellious, we'll pray for them right now that God will deliver them from their rebellion, their bondage that they're in, and if they're lost, we'll pray in that they will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. Now here's how you resist the devil. Here's what God's Word says. Submit yourselves unto the Lord. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. This is victory for us. Thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Isn't this the most wonderful message that you've ever heard? That Jesus is the only way to heaven. Only through Jesus Christ. No religions, no churches, no organizations. Only Christ. He is our Savior. He went to the cross to die for us. And He rose again from the dead. And we will never die because He died instead of us. He died instead of us. That's when we take our last breath, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful week. Pray for each of us all week. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for losing. So be a missionary. God's own emissary. Be a missionary today.